I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. My beautiful nerds and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Mizzledine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on one of the final episodes of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres and even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash Online. I would not be able to do this without you. The link to that is in the description. Also a huge shout out to all of you leaving likes and comments not just in the live chat but on the video itself sincerely really helps us out in the last episode we had our final farewells just in case because as we all know this right here is the mission we have been pre uh, prepping for the entire game this is the suicide mission of mass effect 2 and there's a huge chance that none of us are going to walk away from this of course now we know there's a mass effect 3 so like but the point is who knows right Except if you've been following along, you know we got 100% of everything. You know that we're going to make it so ever. The point is, <laughs> we need to choose an engineer person that is be going to be going through the ventilation shafts of the collector's base, getting access to it, opening it up, allowing us to once and for all take down the collectors by destroying the collector base, rescuing our crew, rescuing any of the colonists that we might be able to find in here, and potentially discovering some secrets that will help us in the war, the inevitable war, against the incoming Reaper threat. So, in this situation, this is our first selection. We have Tally, Kasumi, and Legion can all do this job, granted that they are loyal. However, uh, I don't think we should send an organic person in there. These are ventilation shafts. They get really hot. I think it makes more sense for us to send Legion. Not only that, but Legion is a Geth. Potentially, Legion can find some stuff about how Reaper Tech works, can send that to the other Geth, and maybe it'll be useful. So, we're going to choose Legion as our squad member for this mission. Let's do it. Legion, you can hack through anything. I'm sending you into the shaft. Acknowledged. The rest of us will break into two teams and fight down each passage. That should draw the Collector's attention away from what you're doing. I'll lead the second fire team, Shepard. We'll meet up with you on the other side of the doors. Not so fast, cheerleader. Nobody wants to take orders from you. This isn't a popularity contest. Lives are at stake. Shepard, you need someone who can command loyalty through experience. Miranda brings up a good point. So now we need to choose a fire team leader for our secondary squad that won't be led by Shepard himself. And the reason why, one of the reasons why we're not going to choose Miranda is because she's still a Cerberus operative. And honestly, I want her in my squad for this mission. There is somebody, though, that does command loyalty through experience that has led their own crew who needs to make up for some of the things that he feels he may have, may have been his fault. So... Garrus, our cockroach boy, is going to take control of the second uh, fire squad. Now, it is worth mentioning that Garrus, Miranda, or Jacob are totally fine for this as long as they have loyalty. So, J uh, Garrus, it is. Garrus, you're in charge of the second team. Well, at least he knows what he's doing. I don't know what we're going to find in there, but I won't lie to you. It's not going to be easy. We've lost good people. We may lose more. We don't know how many the Collectors have stolen. Thousands, hundreds of thousands. It's not important. What matters is this. Not one more. That's what we can do here today. It ends with us. They want to know what we're made of? I say we show them on our terms. Let's bring our people home. Shepard, such a good 
feature. All right, so now we have to choose who is actually going to be in our squad for this first combat mission. We're actually going to be skipping a lot of combat in this, uh, and I'll and I'll show you how and why. If you're a Vanguard, you got some sweet, sweet cheddar. Anyways, the point is, Miranda is obviously going to be in our squad. She's one of the best. She has warp, which is so necessary when fighting collectors, and she, of course, has that Cerberus leader ability, making us even better. I see it as a no-brainer to bring Miranda. We have a few other options then that we could choose for this. Samara being very useful, uh, and we also have Thane who would be very useful. Grunt, anything that is very combat-oriented is going to have a fine and dandy time here. But since we very rarely ever get to rock with a party of uh, Thane, we're going to bring Thane to today's today's uh outing at the collector base and also you know he's an assassin he's an assassin who's dying makes sense to bring him this is our point so far we are just going to put a point into that slam just so that we have it and that's all we need we have a fine loadout we don't need to change too much except give her the phalanx heavy pistol My friends, I am so happy to say that our assault on the collector base has officially started. This is it, my friends. So, we are gonna get this rock and roll and apply incendiary ammo to everything we have. So, we're gonna proceed forward for a little bit of an update. Told you. Second team, are you in position? Great, so it looks like our squad has things under control, which means it's up to us, the Vanguard, Commander Corey Shepard, to apply some cheddar cheese on these collectors, avoiding most of what we are actually supposed to be doing here, and charging our way to victory, ignoring most of the enemies, and ignoring these valves, in fact, which is what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be popping these so that you can get through and um, save your specialist before they take too much damage and aren't able to make it to the end. However, if you are incredibly fast at getting over there, which really only the Vanguard is, you can actually get to the very last valve and trigger it without triggering any of the other ones. And if you're lucky and good, um, you'll be able to avoid every single confrontation for the most part, which is kind of dope. So we're gonna go ahead and charge over this one, jump over here, one's gonna be landing, we're gonna just ignore them. We're actually going to charge this one that's in the air, allowing us to run through here and get into combat or avoid combat there. As we turn this corner, we're actually going to be dealing with three collectors that we can start putting some damage into and yeah, these three you do have to kill, but that's totally fine because that's going to allow us to then charge this assassin getting over to the very last valve that we need, which is this one right here. Oh yeah. I knew I could count on you. Shepard, you need to see this. Looks like one of the missing colonists. There's more over here. Get 
Marquis. Are you okay? Shepard, you... you came for us. No one gets left behind. Thank God you got here in time. A few more seconds and... I don't even want to think about it. The colonists were... processed. Those swarms of little robots, they... melted their bodies into grey liquid and pumped it through these tubes. Why are they doing this? What are they doing with our genetic material? I don't know. I'm just glad you got here before it happened to us. So are we. But we still have a job to do. We've done well so far. Let's hope we can finish the job. Joker, can you get a fix on our position? Roger that, Commander. All those tubes lead into the main control room right above you. The route is blocked by a security door, but there's another chamber that runs parallel to the one you're in. I cannot recommend that. Thermal emissions suggest the chamber is overrun with seeker swarms. Morton's countermeasure cannot protect you against so many at once. What about biotics? Could we create a biotic field to keep them from getting near us? Yes, I think it may be possible. I wouldn't be able to protect everyone, but we might be able to get a small team through if they stayed close. I could do it too. In theory, any biotic could handle it. Shepard, who do you want to maintain the field? And now we need to make another choice. This time, instead of a tech specialist, we need to pick a biotic specialist. And don't listen to Miranda. She's actually wrong here. Miranda is not someone that is going to be able to do this well. Instead, what we need to focus on is Samara or Jack as our specialist. They're going to do a fantastic job. As long as you, you know, have their loyalty, they'll do just fine. So in this case, I feel like Jack has spent her entire life destroying things, being a monster. I think it's time for her to be the defender, to protect everyone, and that's exactly what she is going to do. Jack and I will take a small team through the Seeker Swarms. The rest of you provide a diversion by going through the main passage. We'll open the security doors from the other side and meet you there. Who should lead the diversion team? And just like before, the leader of the fire squad, the secondary squad, will be Garrus. Your choices, Miranda, Jacob, or Garrus, are still the same here. So we're just going to go ahead and pick Garrus yet again. I'll keep the defenders busy. You slip around the back. What about me and the rest of the crew, Shepard? We're in no shape to fight. Commander, we have enough systems back online to do a pickup, but we need to land back from your position. We can't afford to go back, Shepard. Not now. So, let's have one, someone escort them. You'll never make it without help. I'll send someone with you. And I would recommend bringing anybody that's loyal can actually do this. Morden is not a bad choice considering that he actually has some of the lowest survival rates of all of the characters on this mission. So, potentially you could send Morden. However, I feel like the crew have been through a very traumatizing and traumatic experience. To me, it makes sense to bring people that uh, will not only protect them, but also help lighten the mood a little bit. So, in that case, I would recommend Tally or Kasumi. And because... I just, I think that Tally is somebody that we can trust with everything. She cares about people so much. We are going to send Tally to, to do this job. Let's send her. Joker, send me the location of the landing zone. We'll meet you there. We've all got our assignments. Let's move out. And yet again, we're going to choose a party of Miranda and Thane, just because I think that they are the most useful for dealing with these. However, this next section is not that many collectors and is a few more husk abominations and scions. So anything that can deal with armor is going to work. Both of them have warp, so it just makes the most sense to bring them. Now, something that I should mention is that your heavy weapon ammo will actually refill after every section. Basically, when you choose a squad, your heavy weapon will just refill automatically. So, for this next part, I actually highly recommend bringing the Blackstorm Singularity Projector or even the Grenade Launcher. They can be very useful. We're actually going to go ahead and choose the Grenade Launcher just for this section uh, because, well, you'll see. We're going to be, like I said, we're going to be facing a lot. Stay close if you want to live. The whole idea of this section is that we are going to be escorted by Jack, who is creating this big biotic bubble. Big biotic bubble. That was fun to say. Around us, uh, Thane and Miranda are going to have to stay inside. If you leave this bubble, you will be attacked by the Seeker Swarm, which is going to do uh, damage to your barrier and then your health incredibly quickly. So that means, naturally, we can't charge. 
Every so often, we'll f get into a fight with some enemies. Jack will stop and cover, and then we just need to go and talk to Jack and tell Jack to move out. So, let's do it. Let's go, Commander. I love the fact that she is helping us do this. Incoming! Direct intervention is necessary. And just like that, Collector's already coming at us. Go ahead and make sure that these are still mapped. And the way that I would recommend any of these fights, in fact, the way that you want to deal with them is to actually leave Harbinger because Harbinger will march on your position, which for a, for a, whoop, for us is perfect. So we're going to go ahead and just start unloading those warps, wait for our shields. Like I said, we cannot, we cannot charge out of here. If we do, we will be, well, we'll be eaten by the swarm. So we don't want that to happen. We'll go ahead and double warp this drone. And then we can start attacking Harbinger himself, who is right here. Close enough, in fact, for us to charge. So we'll go ahead and do that. And hopefully charge before that singularity hits us. Perfect. I love that. There we go. The other thing to keep in mind is that thermal clips are actually very few and far between in this mission. So because of the enemies being kind of out of the way of where we're going to walk, odds are we won't get that many refills. We did get one from Harbinger there when we defeated him. So that was at least a plus. But we're going to continue on this way as a platform flies overhead to attack our buddies, our pals, Garrus and friends, if you will. So we're going to get ready because there's going to be more collectors, but before those, there's actually going to be some husks and abominations that are going to appear right in front of us. So we're immediately just going to start loading in, taking them out before they even get close, which you love to see. And that, my friends, was pretty easy, pretty simple. Of course, that's not going to be the rest. Lucky for us, there was a thermal clip right here, and we'll probably just run out, grab those real quick. Uh-oh, don't get stuck on cover. Woo-wee, spicy. Another abomination coming at us. And, of course, like I said, we'll have to deal with the collector threat, which is over here, including a Harbinger. Harbinger will keep spawning and actually spawns incredibly quick in this section. So you want to kind of just let him, I guess is the word. Let him spawn on you. Take down his friends when you can. And hopefully you'll be just a-okay. Okay. We're actually going to kill him real quick before he kills us, just because we're looking a little bit low. We're going to back up a bit to where Jack is in cover so that we can start taking out some of these. Go ahead and warp. And there we go. We got another Harbinger spawning in, and I believe that is our, actually our last collector that we can fight, so that's fine. Go ahead and get into cover here as we warp his armor. And he's dead. He's out of here. And now that those are all clear, once we're ready, we're going to tell Jack once again to move out. Let's go. Let's go. For one of the f one of the one of the last times, only one more time that we have to tell her to move out, and we are done with this section. We did get some thermal ammo, so we can switch to this. However, because of the things that are currently awaiting us, we are going to switch to the grenade launcher. This section Coming up, this fight right here is actually why we brought this. Jack doing a good job of keeping those Seeker Swarms at bay. Oh, girl, you're doing awesome! Look at her. Nice shooting! Garrus and team doing a good job as well. So she's going to take cover right here, and we're actually going to get husks that are going to be, and abominations that will be spawning from here, and a scion that will be spawning from right over here. So we are about to have our hands full as as we're told. We'll go ahead and start hitting those. Perfect. Like I said, we do have a ton of grenades here, so we can start just lobbing them, not worrying too much about anything else. Hitting the Scion with that warp as we go. Hitting this husk. And we can just keep keep it up all day. Look at that. That's what I mean, friends. That's why you bring a grenade launcher to a husk fight. And like I said, it will completely recharge. So just like that, that is the easiest way to deal with that section. And it actually, it just, it's just a really, I love it. Anyways, let's tell Jack to move out. Let's get started. 
Not sure what our team was shooting at there, but... We're not out of the woods yet, my friends. We're actually going to be dealing with more husks that will be spawning from these little things here. Contact. So as they pop up, we'll just take them out. We no longer need the grenade launcher. We're gonna be dealing with very few enemies. Jack's starting to struggle now as she's pushing through. All we need to do is get to where those tubes are heading. That, my friends, is our our last point. Once we hop over there, that's it. I can see the entrance. Need to get there soon. Unfortunately for us, we're not out of the woods yet. An abomination is going to start crawling up, and another husk. We can take them out as we run over. But really, all we need to do provide cover for Jack as she makes a run for it for the final sprint we go over this cover and hold on we're almost there we must move quickly Shepard all right let's move Friends is why you bring Jack. Come on, Shepard. Where are you? I copy. What's your position? We're pinned down at the door, taking heavy fire. We're coming. Just hold on. Get this door open. Come on. Seal the door. Oh no, Garris. Just kidding, he's all right. Joker, are you at the rendezvous point? I'm here, Commander. Chuck was and the rest of the crew just showed up. Tally's group just arrived, Shepard. No casualties. Excellent. Now let's make it count. Edie, what's our next step? There should be some nearby platforms that will take you to the main control console. From there, you can overload the system and destroy the base. Commander, you got a problem. Hostiles massive just outside the door. Won't be long till I bust through. A rear guard could defend this position and keep the collectors from overwhelming us. Pick a team to go with you, Shepard. Everyone else can bunker down here and cover your back. So, yet again, we have to choose a team, and as long as you have Grunt and Zaid and very combat-centric people at, at this moment, they should be just fine defending. If you lost Zaid and Grunt, you might end up having some issues, so don't take them in your squad with you. Uh, for us, though, again, we're going to take Miranda because, as always, she is the best squad mate in Mass Effect 2, bar none. Overload and Warp just providing the best, and Cerberus Leader just too good to pass up. And, obviously, she's been going through quite a character arc this entire game, and if you bring her and you make a very specific decision that we're, we are going to make, we get to see her character arc come to full fruition, and I'm very excited for that. And, of course, we're going to bring our best friend in the entire galaxy, Garrus, is going to be joining us. Uh, I would recommend, Garrus isn't amazing for this, I would recommend anybody that can deal with armored foes like Morden. You also want to be able to deal with collectors, so uh, Miranda and Thane would probably be your best choices in this moment. But, we got to bring, we got to make sure our best friend is there with us at the end, so... We're bringing Garrus, baby. And we're going to change our weapon back to the M920 cane. I'm ready, Commander. Same here. Anything to say before we do this? And it's time to speech our speech. The Collectors, the Reapers, they aren't a threat to us. They're a threat to everything, everyone. Those are the lives we're fighting for. That's the scale. It's been a long journey, and no one's coming out without scars. But it all comes down to this moment. We win or lose it all in the next few minutes. Make me proud. Make yourselves proud. 
Well said. Let's go finish this. And my friends, get ready for the final confrontation of Mass Effect 2. This is a doozy and super frustrating because it is super annoying because of the way charge works here for a vanguard. So anyways, we're going to get into cover here. Go ahead and start making sure these are mapped so that we can kill these. We cannot charge unless we are on the same level as them. So we'll go ahead, sit there, send that drone flying. And we want to do this before any of these become Harbinger, which is very likely. We'll go ahead, destroy that one. That one sent off flying. So we'll go ahead and switch. We need to very quickly reposition ourselves so that we're ready for the next platform. And by going up here, we'll actually be on the same level as them as when they spawn. So we're already doing some work against these guardians. We're going to go ahead and attack this drone here. And as soon as this lands, we should be able to charge. And we can keep taking them out. We want to focus on this guardian. And where is the drone? Is the drone dead? Perfect. We then have a third platform that's going to be coming in for us. This one is immediately going to have a, a Harbinger spawn in. We're going to go ahead and hit that Guardian. We need to come down just a little bit here so that we are on the same floor as them. Also want to make sure that in between each platform, we are gathering all of the thermal clips that we can. Looks like all we have now is Harbinger, so we're going to go ahead and hit Harbinger with what we can. And just like that, we're smoking them, my friends. Enemies incoming. Getting ready for the next platform. It's actually two platforms, and they're kind of combined. So what we're going to do is just back up a little bit. These should be on the same level as us, meaning that we can charge no problem. I don't know why my gun just went over there, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and charge this guardian. Watch out for that assassin that's ripping through our barrier. This guardian as well. We'll go ahead and charge, knocking him off. And then we can start in on the assassin. While we are kind of ignoring Harbinger, Harbinger's going after our friends, which is fine by me because that allows us to do that. We'll charge through its singularity so it doesn't affect us. Whoa, looks like it did anyways. We'll go ahead and charge again. Ah, spicy. And there we go, Harbinger down. And now we're going to switch to our rifle for the final platform that we have to deal with, which is loaded with abominations, three abominations and two scions, which is thankfully means that we can relax and we don't have to worry about it anymore. These things go down so easily and as a vanguard, as you know, we can just get a little, we can get, we can get spicy and be totally, totally fine with that. And that's exactly what we're going to do, watching any of these thermal clips charging whenever we lose our barrier to keep that nice and active and just doing some damage with the Matic. We do want to be careful and grab as many thermal clips as we see laying around. We're actually going to go ahead and switch to our shotgun here just because uh, our shotgun is actually fairly useless in the next section. Taking down one Scion. Charging this one. And... There we go. Getting a nice warp. And goodbye, Scion. Look at, look at how spicy that was. And before we go ahead and use this platform here to start the final section of Mass Effect 2, my friends, we're going to go ahead and just make sure that we get whatever thermal clips we can that may be laying around that we may have missed. And now that we're full, let's do it. Let's end Mass Effect 2. This is it. All the tubes lead to this spot. Edie, what can you tell us? What are they doing? The tubes are feeding into some kind of superstructure. It is emitting both organic and non-organic energy signatures. Given these readings, it must be massive. Shepard, if my calculations are correct, the superstructure is a reaper. Not just any reaper. Human Reaper. Precisely. It appears the collectors have processed tens of thousands of humans. Significantly more will be required to complete the Reaper. And you may be asking yourself, what does significantly more mean? How many more humans do you think they'd try to take? Development. An embryo in human terms. 
So it's not alive yet. We can still stop it from being created? The process can be stopped, but it is unclear exactly how much it has developed. I cannot, for example, tell you if it has awareness. And why does it look human? They're building it to look like a human. Why? It appears that a Reaper's shape is based upon the species used to create it. Reapers are machines. Why do they need humans at all? Incorrect. Reapers are sapient constructs, a hybrid of organic and inorganic material. The exact construction methods are unclear, but it seems probable that the Reapers absorb the essence of a species, utilizing it in their reproduction process. Now, you may be asking yourself, if that's true, then why are all the Reapers that we've seen so far, why do they look like cuttlefish? And the reason for that is because a Reaper is actually looks like whatever species it's based on or it's been built by um, or using the genetic material. That's the core of the Reaper. The shell, the casing around the Reaper is always a cuttlefish. That was actually explained in the Mass Effect 2 art book uh, and is something that I have had an issue with from the very first day that I played Mass Effect 2, and I was like, why is this one human and all the other ones are cuttlefish? So I thought that I would uh, well, I'll explain that to you real quick. What do the collectors gain by turning humans into this Reaper shell? They may be facilitating the Reaper equivalent of reproduction, or it may serve another purpose. I do not have the data to speculate further. However, it is clear that the collectors are merely pawns. The technology and ability needed to create this Reaper is not their own. It is likely that different species construct each Reaper. In this case, the Collectors provide the labor. The Collectors are just Protheans. Why would they help the Reapers? The Reapers subdued the Protheans long ago. Probabilities suggest they attempted to create a Prothean Reaper and failed. Over time, they adapted the Protheans to suit their needs, changed them, turned them into workers. Tools for the Reapers. Well... We cannot let this thing make it out of here. This thing is an abomination. Edie, how do we destroy it? The large tubes injecting the fluid are a weak structural link. Destroying them should cause the supports to collapse and the Reaper to fall. Give us a minute, Edie. We gotta take care of some old friends. And we're not gonna be able to do and that yet coming. because we have more collectors that are going to be coming for us. These are the last collectors we will fight in the entire game. And we're gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, Teach them some manners. Unfortunately, a harbinger spawning right away. We're gonna focus, as always, on everything else. Charging up here, which is a little bit dangerous, but I like to get a little bit spicy. We'll go ahead and send this drone off the edge. Unfortunately, looks like it did not go off the edge. We'll go ahead and charge this drone here. Somehow that sent us back, I'm not entirely sure. Go ahead and charge this. Looks like this guy is still surviving, so we'll go ahead and finish that. And then we'll charge harbinger. And before Harbinger goes down, you are going to want to switch to something that is a rapid fire, like the Matic here. Because as soon as it does, we can start attacking these. And if you're fast enough, you can actually get almost all four in one go. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to because I suck at this game. We're going to go ahead and destroy this other platform. We can finally charge beyond just our elevation here. You'll love to see it. We'll go ahead and start spamming this collector. Guardian. Taking them all out. And hopefully this drone does not turn into a harbinger. As it's flying off the edge, it sure won't. And my friends, we got one more tube to destroy. Goodbye, human reaper. Shoot. Team, status report. It's safe. We are holding, but they keep coming. A quick exit is preferable. Head to the Normandy. Joker, prep the engines. I'm about to overload this place and blow it sky high. Roger that, Commander. Uh, Commander, I've got an incoming signal from the elusive man. He's patching it through. Shepard. You've done the impossible. Oddly enough, if we say we didn't do this alone, we'll mention that people died. No one has. I was part of a team. Some of them gave their lives for this mission. I know. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. You did what you had to do. 
and you acquire the collector base. I'm looking at the schematics Edie uploaded. A timed radiation pulse would kill the remaining collectors, but leave the machinery and technology intact. This is our chance, Shepard. They were building a Reaper. That knowledge, that framework could save us. They liquefied people. Turned them into something horrible. We have to destroy the base. Don't be short-sighted. Our best chance against the Reapers is to turn their own resources against them. I'm not so sure. Seeing it firsthand, using anything from this base seems like a betrayal. If we ignore this opportunity, that would be a betrayal. They were working directly with the Collectors. Who knows what information is buried there? This base is a gift. We can't just destroy it. You're completely ruthless. The next thing I know, you'll be wanting to grow your own Reaper. My goal is to save humanity from the Reapers, at any cost. I've never hidden that from you. Imagine how many lives could be saved if we keep this base intact and use its knowledge to thwart the Reapers. Imagine the lives that will be lost if we don't. No matter what kind of technology we might find, it's not worth it. Shepard, you died fighting for what you believed. I brought you back so you could keep fighting. Some would say what we did to you was going too far, but look what you've accomplished. I didn't discard you because I knew your value. Don't be so quick to discard this facility. Think of the potential. And, my friends, we are given a huge choice here. Well, at least you would think so. In Mass Effect 2, it is a big choice. It, it decides the entire ending that we are about to receive. It, it, it dictates Miranda. It does have some choices, uh, some consequences from this choice. However, you would think it would have more choices or more consequences in Mass Effect 3, and it really doesn't. The better option, if you wanted full optimization regardless of story, you would keep this base. It would help you a little bit in Mass Effect 3, although in the grand scheme of things, it won't actually matter regardless of what you're trying to do in Mass Effect 3. It just won't matter. You'll have enough to do everything. So, in that case, I do not think that Cerberus needs more power. We have not trusted Cerberus this entire time. We have not been working for Cerberus. We have been working with Cerberus just to try to see what's going on, learn more about them, and at the same time, stop the Collectors from attacking human colonies. There is no way Commander Corey Shepard is going to give them this base. No flippin' way. We'll fight and win without it. I won't let fear compromise who I am. Miranda, do not let Shepard destroy the base. Or what? You'll replace me next? I gave you an order, Miranda. I noticed. Consider this my resignation. Shepard, think about what's at stake, about everything Cerberus has done for you. You... Let's move. We got 10 minutes before the reactor overloads and blows this whole station apart. And here we go, my friends. The final boss fight of Mass Effect 2 begins now against a massive Reaper human larva. We'll go ahead and switch Garrus to the sniper rifle. Get that cane charging and ready to go. Hopefully hitting it in one of its weak points. Not quite. Go ahead and switch to the pistol. Get into cover here so that its fire doesn't hit us. And this thing has a bunch of different weak spots, including one on its chest, its three eyes, and whenever it's channeling that fire attack with its mouth. We're going to wait for it to come back. Garrus with that anti-armor rifle ammo on his sniper is going to be real good. Go ahead and pump some damage into it as much as we can. We can actually warp. You also want to make sure at this point in the fight that you are staying on the middle platform here. You don't really want to leave because this thing does have the ability to destroy the platforms that are around you. Don't let that happen to you. Don't be somebody that dies to that. And now that the Reaper's coming back for the second time, it hides and then comes back. It will actually start channeling an attack and then start summoning collectors to attack us. We're going to go ahead and actually start reaving and warping and trying to get some damage in on this, this eye. Should Collectors should be spawning at any time now, just waiting for them. We're going to go ahead and switch to our Matic rifle here. That incendiary ammo paying off in dividends. Go ahead and warp yet again. Reeve if we can. And here we go. Here are the collectors I was telling you about. We're going to go ahead and charge this. 
unfortunately getting hit by that fire, but that's fine. Exactly what we wanted was that Harbinger to spawn. The cool thing about this fight is when Harbinger does spawn now, it actually has a chance of dropping. We're gonna make sure we're in cover here before this fire hits us. That actually has a chance of killing the collectors on board, which it actually did collect Harbinger, and it has a chance of dropping heavy weapon ammo. So we're gonna go ahead and switch back to our cane, get ready for it to appear again, and when it does, hopefully we can finish this fight. Miranda did get taken down by that flame, but that's fine because this, my friends, is going to be the end of this human reaper. Well, almost anyways. Switch back to our heavy pistol. Get a nice re reeve on this. And Mass Effect 2 is done. Ground team make it? All survivors on board, we're just waiting for you. Human, you've changed nothing. Your species has the attention of those infinitely or greater. That which you know as Reapers are your salvation to destruction. Shepard, you're making a habit of costing me more than time and money. 
Doesn't that suck for you, elusive man? And just like that, my friends, we get a bunch of trophies. The platinum trophy should pop. I actually had a bunch of trouble recording this episode, so I, hopefully I can put in the footage of me getting the trophies and those actually popping. Let's go ahead and let's have one final conversation with the elusive man. Too many lives were lost at that base. I'm not sorry it's gone. The first of many lives. The technology from that base could have secured human dominance in the galaxy against the Reapers and beyond. Human dominance or just Cerberus? Strength for Cerberus is strength for every human. Cerberus is humanity. I should have known you'd choke on the hard decisions. Too idealistic from the start. I'm not looking for your approval. Harbinger's coming and he won't be alone. Humanity needs a leader who's looking out for them. From now on, I'm doing things my way, whether you agree or not. Don't turn your back on me, Shepard. I made you. I brought you back from the dead. And finally, we get to tell the elusive man something we've wanted to say this entire time. Joker, lose this channel. That, my friends, is the arrival of the Reapers. And speaking of arrival, we're not quite done with Mass Effect 2 just yet. We still have some loose ends to do uh, so that we can get all of the dialogue in the game, including some with Legion and, of course, the Arrival DLC, which really does lay the groundwork for Max Mass, of Mass Effect 3. That's the, the next one, the, the final one in the trilogy of Mass Effect Mass, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this entire playthrough. 100% complete. We get the Platinum Trophy. We get everything, but we're not done yet. And I hope to see you guys in the final two episodes of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity right here on Missile Dine Online. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, never give up, never surrender to Harbinger. Bye, everyone.
And my friends, you thought we were done. I don't think so. You have stopped the collectors from creating a human reaper. You now have two choices, continue this game or import Shepard. We are going to continue because we have some more things to do. Like I said, the arrival DLC is where it is at. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna go ahead and feed our fish. And in the next episode, tie up all of the loose ends. And then one episode after that, the Arrival DLC. Only two episodes of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition remain. Goodbye, everyone.